Today we'll be checking out AMD's new RX 6700 XT graphics card and in particular the MSI reference model. Now this is coming in at an MSRP of 479 US dollars and 790 US dollars for the Gaming X model. So really that puts this card as a competitor to the 3060 Ti. Spec-wise, over its predecessor, the RX 5700 XT, the 6700 XT now has RDNA 2 architecture, both 7 nanometer, a boost clock of up to 2581 megahertz, board power of up to 230 watts. But one thing I find really interesting as a content creator is the 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory up from eight gigabytes. As this card falls within a similar price range as the current market price of the 3060 Ti, for now, users should pay close attention to the 1440p results, as well as OpenCL performance due to its high memory. Unfortunately, due to GPU shortages, I was unable to purchase a 3060 Ti for testing. However, the 3060 Ti is only slightly faster than the RTX 2080 Super, so pay close attention to that. So let's go ahead and jump on into the benchmarks. There are some fairly interesting results which I want to talk about. All of our 3D Mark testing put the RX 6700 XT about 2 to 5% faster than the 2080 Super, which puts that on par with the 3060 Ti. Our gaming test put the 6700 XT about 2 FPS on average faster than the 2080 Super. We noticed that our RX GPUs did not scale well at all compared to the Nvidia GPUs when we had ray tracing enabled. In control, we can see both the 6700 XT and the 6900 XT being fairly competitive with the respective NVIDIA GPUs. However, once ray tracing is enabled, it seems that NVIDIA GPUs are still far more optimized. We saw the RX 6700 XT go from equal performance to the 2080 Super down to 20% slower in 1440p when RT was enabled. Let's keep in mind though, RT is still a niche feature which a lot of people still don't use. While this card can game at 4K, 1440p seems to be that sweet spot where there are no compromises. So here are some of the features of the 6700 XT which 
really interest me. Testing out AMD's OpenCL, I knew that we were in for a treat with that extra memory. Blender showed this card excel 30% faster than the 2080 Super, which has eight gigabyte of memory. And keep in mind the 3060 Ti also only has eight gigabytes of memory. Now onto GPU power and temperatures. The RX 6700 XT has a board power spec of 230 watts. However, throughout all of our testing, we never saw the board pass 186 watts at 99% load. With that being said, AMD does, however, recommend a 650 watt power supply to power this 6 plus 8 pin GPU. AMD states operating at up to 110 degrees junction temperature during typical gaming is within specification for this card. I'm not sure that I'd like to see 110 degrees on my card but lucky for us we saw a peak of only 78 degrees both during our gaming tests and our Fermark stress test. In terms of acoustics, the cooler itself is not too loud. However, when we did put load on the GPU, we did experience a tiny bit of cooler wine. One last mention before my final thoughts is that if you pair your RX 6700 XT with a Ryzen 5000 series CPU or select 3000 series CPUs, you can actually take advantage of AMD's smart access memory which within a few clicks can actually boost your system's performance by on average 7% across all your games. It does this by enabling more memory space to the bar address register, or bar for short, which will boost performance. Look, it's very hard to give a conclusion in these times with you know GPU shortages, uh, silicon shortages, we've got price hikes, we've got competition for gamers. If this card does release at its intended MSRP, then I can see it selling out just like the 3060 Ti. If you are after a card to take advantage of ray tracing, I don't think this is the card for you. It does lack in ray tracing performance. However, if you want a solid 1440p gaming experience or you want to take advantage of OpenCL, you know, get that rendering happening, if you're a designer, a content creator, then this card is definitely for you. But for now, we'll have to see how this launch pans out and see if there are any price changes. That about does it for me, guys. I hope you all enjoyed. Leave your comments down below. Do you like seeing GPU reviews on this channel? We can continue to do more. We'll be using this GPU in a build very soon. Go ahead and click that video over to the side there that YouTube recommends if you'd like to watch another one of our videos or I've provided another video for you guys to have a look at. So I hope you all enjoy. Remember to hit that subscribe button, like the video, and we'll see you all in the next one.